Hey, I'm Shane. I'm Chris with pdq.com. All right, we're going to talk about SMB V1. Uh, we have a new blog post out. Thank you very much, Brig. Yeah. It's very exhaustive. Actually, actually, I shouldn't say exhaustive. There's a lot of information in there on why uh, you may want or may not want to disable SMB V1, but it's a big hot topic right now. Let's, yes. Everyone's saying, let's just, let's just disable it, and that might be uh, an overreaction. Uh, because there, there's definitely going to be some consequence, or there could be some pretty severe consequences. Uh, what what are some of them? Geez, uh, 2003, Server 2003, Windows XP. Immediately, you will not be able to contact them mm-hmm. via SMB. Because yep. that's all they support. File and print sharing on those. Goodbye. So even if you don't have 2003 and XP in your environment, there might be some printers. There might be some. You know, if you're using Samba, uh, if if you're using Zen, if you're using Zen Server, um, there's a, a lot. Tons. Of, a lot of a lot of Things you probably wouldn't even think about that are actually using SMB v1. Oh, yeah, Active Directory. If you're using a, uh, a domain functional level, forest functional level below 2008, you're like, going to have uh, problems. Yep, and that, that doesn't mean that you have a 2003 uh, you know, domain controllers. Yep. You could have 2012 R2, as long as if that, if that domain level, uh, that functional level is at 2003, that, that's requiring and using SMB v1. So we have. Uh, Please read this blog post out there, Disable SMB v1 Considerations and Execution. It is, there's a lot of pictures, there's a lot of, of, of disclaimers. Uh, we are not making this package. We were asked on Twitter, hey, can you make a package to disable this? We thought, well, we'll look into it. And we did, and this is what we came up with. We will show you, there's actually, at the very bottom, you will see Disable SMB v1. This is a package that you can download. Uh, it's not going to be part of the package library. And you, if you want, we're, we're, help, we're helping you to disable it, but there's a few things that you're going to have to do, first of all. Number one, just download it. So we will download that. Oh, actually, that did it again twice, so we'll do this again, sorry. All right, so we've got this. Boy, I keep on double-clicking that, don't I? That's Which, how important it is. We're downloading uh, it like four times. Uh, we'll just... You'll see an X, this is a zip file, but you'll see the XML file. Just uh, go ahead and extract that. I'll just put it right here. This XML file is, in fact, the package. So we're going to go ahead and uh, import this. I did, I'm doing a control I. You can also just right click and say import. Yep. And uh, Quintana downloads. There, there is. we go. Disable SMB v1 right there. Now, this XML file doesn't have any install files. So that's why you can just do this. If there were install files, obviously, you'd have to grab those. Notice something out the gate. First of all, we have one step that is enabled. Um, none of these steps will run on XP or 2003, by the way. Um, because once again, once you disable that, say goodbye to Windows uh, networking. Right, and I do want to call out that on the blog post, this PowerShell step, where it's, it's referencing this, uh, excuse me, step one there, it's referencing uh, server compatibility.ps1. We spell that out in the blog post. So take a look at that, and you're going to have to build that file separately to push Oh, it you're right. There. there is an, an, an extra file. I apologize. I, yeah. I, you're, I can see that calling it. I, we're not, we don't have the body of the script there, yes. so I apologize. Anyway, um, when you are, or if you ever get to that point where you want to disable you are, uh, or to, to, to remove SMB v1 from your environment, you will need to enable these steps. You can, it's as simple as right clicking on the step and saying enabled. You can also do multi steps at once. But we have disabled them because we're really trying to call out don't just push this out. Um, it's important. Yes. It's I, I consider each enabling of these steps your admission that you take full responsibility. So this means four times the responsibility that you're taking. Bear Correct. that in mind. Correct. Now, just to break this down a little bit, you'll see this first step. Uh, all we're doing is is making uh, a registry change, effectively disabling it. Um, and then there's also some, like step four or five, there are actually just some uh, commandlets to to set your SMB version. Yep. Right. So these commandlets will only run on is it Windows 8.1 or 8 or higher? Windows 8 or higher, I believe. Um, I guess I can look right there. There it is. Anyway, this should take care of it, but. You know, don't just blast this out only to find out that, you know, nobody can print because that one printer that you're using requires V1, SMB V1. Um, just handle with care. Know your environment. Test this out. Um, don't overreact, but it might be the right thing. Disabling SMB V1 might be the right thing in your environment. Just don't, 
don't spray and pray, as they say. Right, and then also in the blog, again, <coughs> take a look at this. In there, it spells out using Wireshark, being able to analyze packets within your own network mm -hmm. to verify what SFB traffic is actually going on. You can do that. Then you can make the decision if it's okay for you to disable on certain things or not. Yep. But well, we want to help you out. And we'll, we will break that down, showing you how we've used Wireshark. It's all in this blog post, how we've used uh, Wireshark to, to determine mm -hmm. the type of SMB traffic that's out there. Yeah. All right. Hey, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, by all means, hit up our support site. If you destroy your entire environment, do not hit up our support site. <laughs> I'm Shane. I'm Chris. I'll talk to you later. Bye.